So at this point, I would like to call on two of our partners. Both represent groups that are composed of business owners, entrepreneurs, and social innovators to give their reaction on the, the presentation. So first is Mr. Nato Agbayani from Bounce Back PH. So Nato is the founder and CEO of Brand Guerrilla PH, a social enterprise engaged in creating opportunities for young people in creative events like Create Philippines and the National Digital Arts Award. Nato has been active with Outdoor Advertising Association of the Philippines as a CRO, the Philippine Marketing Association as a committee chairman, the Premier Family Business Consulting as a partner consultant and is currently involved with the ALC group of companies as business development director. So, representing Bounce Back Beach, may I invite Nato Agbayani for his short reaction. Nato. So, I don't know if uh, hindi tayo nag sa house. I was in the 15th Congress as well. So, <laughs> as one of the uh, chiefs of staff. So, anyway, um, I realized that under the new uh, Arise Law, we are already like establishing a, a institutionalization of all these interventions through the Economic Stimulus Board, and which is good, really. And then uh, maybe I'd like to commend the, the, uh, our people in Congress who have thought about this. Uh, quite recently, we had, also inter uh, we had also interfaces with uh, Kong BH and some of the other congressmen. And uh, I think Bounce Back PH also was able to contribute in terms of data for the uh, MSMEs for the Arise Bill. So we'd like to thank you that finally this, this is really out. And um, uh, right now, we, it's really difficult to come out with uh, solutions to all these so many multifaceted problems. But I suppose maybe my question would be, for example, we, you were talking about creative um, fiscal intervention or uh, out of budget uh, interventions would you say for example like there are there are huge government institutions for example like PhilHealth uh, Pag-ibig SSS uh, GSIS um, I think the the military also has um, for GSIS and uh, these government workers private sector workers uh, contribute to uh, have contributions in terms of uh, well for housing etc for other uh, purposes multi-purpose loans and I think Kong Kimbo at, at one point was also with Pagibig I understand so uh, would you say that uh, let's say for example right now I think the the budgets of all the key government offices of the executive I think 35 percent is allotted already to the social amelioration program which is really in a way hurting but also helping a lot of people but would you say, for example, like those institutions like SSS, Pag-ibig, GSIS, and um, aside from the GOCCs, for example, it can really help in, say, for example, bridging the gap. Uh, one, one issue I think is what you mentioned earlier about the unbanked, and that's a lot of people. It's about 70 to 80 percent of uh, people uh, in the provinces, also even here, uh, the urban centers. So uh, one, I think. Uh, the private sector maybe can help in terms of really digitizing this data. I think in the in the global arena, I think Microsoft and some people are already looking at ID 2020, which is uh, like digitizing the identities of people of everyone. And I think in the first in the first um, first wave of the social amelioration program and all the other interventions that the government did. It was really our problem. Um, I'm, I myself am a Barangay Kagawad, and I understand like the difficulty of, of really distributing uh, to so many people uh, in different in different places. Some people who are also OFWs are also having difficulty. Some have received their OWA support. Some have not, and it's really difficult. So I think, um, would you would you say that the big government agencies? Where where Filipinos contribute uh, contributions to could really help in in this effort, and then maybe like for example in the private sector, like how can we help um, uh, in in really smoothening out 
and flattening the curve in terms of uh, fiscal intervention, in terms of uh, technological intervention, because um, uh, I think the payout, <laughs> for example, for the sum of government's uh, financial support is already now being done through certain um, online means. And I think at the end of the day, when we go to the new normal, maybe private sector, the MSMEs, the startups can really help government in that way. And so those are two questions. One is, of course, the big uh, government institutions. What can they do to really bridge that gap between the identity and how it's going to be executed moving forward with Arise? And then number two, of course, how can, how can we in the private sector help? Sorry, it was a long, <laughs> long uh, question. So yes, uh, Kong. Ay na to, barangay kagawad ka pala. So, <laughs> yung pag, yung, uh, kahirapan sa pag, uh, I used to be the PIO. Opo, I used to be the PIO of Marikina way back. <laughs> ha, nung sinaunang panahon pa. Sinaunang panahon pa. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman halata. Well, anyway, <laughs> um, I actually counted three points. No, so the first is. Uh, the question on off-budget financing. So you're uh, you're right. So tama ka na to na ang inaasahan talaga natin dito sana would be the GOCCs. Kasi ang alam naman natin, marami sa mga GOCCs na maraming uh, naitago na uh, na profits uh, in in uh, previous years dahil na rin sa kagalingan ng kanilang pag-manage. But yeah. of course, um, the exact details as to how much, which, that would all be, of course, an executive decision because we have no visibility John. We're just saying that this is a, a potential source of financing. And we also have to remember for um, GFIs, for government financial institutions like PhilHealth, they would, of course, have a mandate, right? So they collect uh, contributions. And of course, um, these contributions will have to be managed for a specific purpose, which is to pay for healthcare spending just in case we fall ill. And this now covers the entire population. So um, keeping aside their mandate and keeping aside, um, of course, the goal to be always uh, financially viable, if there would still be excess funds that can be used for purposes of economic stimulus, then yan ang inaasahan natin, right? So that's sort of like the general idea and again, the details will also have to be um, ironed out by the executive. Number two, um, you talked about the unbanked. So yes, um, you know, uh, when we were crafting the bill, we actually had 41 Zoom meetings with stakeholders, including um, various implementing agencies because we needed to find out uh, their ability to, to um, implement something that we had in mind. So um, this, is, this bill is somewhat different because as you had noticed, NATO, um, it already has a kind of in, uh, implementing framework, right? Which is not in uh, all bills. Um, but again, we made it a point to put that there again because fiscal discipline is important. And we realized when we were talking to implementing agencies that dispersing is really um, a problem. Like for example, um, the SWD, when they... Uh, give assistance when they uh, would give the, the SAP, the social amelioration uh, to, to subsidies, that, would, that had to be done manually, meaning they would have DSWD employees carrying huge amounts of cash with them and they would have to be bonded so that they would have some form of protection, right? So it's, it's, it's as crude as that. And so, of course, with a very crude... Um, uh, system and putting your employees at risk, it would be very difficult to reach the smallest distressed business, which was the purpose of our bill. And so we checked as well the willingness of our implementing agencies to go digital. And all, all, of course, all of them said yes. I mean, they were just happy to do that. In fact, I think the SWD is already, uh, I think they experimented with disbursing a portion of the SAP through, um, I think, Gcash as, as well as Paymaya. So, so there's willingness to do that. Um, number three, as to the private sector, obviously private sector uh, participation is really needed here. Um, we've been uh, 
being we are being helped by the private sector pagdating sa mass testing as you all know um, number two uh, we have specific provisions in the bill um, for example for infrastructure we note in the bill that certain infrastructure projects that um, have are, are facing difficulties in implementation would now can now be um, continued by way of uh, private sector participation. So things like those. And number three, of course, in our economic stimulus board, in our proposed board, we also have private sector um, participation there, again, to help with the direction of um, all of these uh, proposed interventions. And then finally, again, um, we realize that in implementing interventions, uh, if implementing agencies feel like they need to outsource certain services from the private sector, they're also authorized to do that. So there's like a lot of ways by which a private sector can participate under ARISE. Thank you, uh, Congresswoman. Thank you, Sir Nato. Thank you, Congresswoman, for addressing the questions. So next, I would also like to invite Cess Rondario from Impact Hub Manila. So Cess is a motivated, serial social entrepreneur with extensive experience in program development and ecosystem building. So Cess is a highly networked community expert. She has proven track record in designing programs executing high-profile initiatives, and is experienced in developing and maintaining strategic partnerships. I would have to agree with this. She is passionate about social change and is committed to affecting positive change in people's lives. So in 2015, CES co-founded Impact Hub Manila, and I think they've just celebrated their fifth year anniversary. So with the aim to catalyze purpose-driven entrepreneurs to their enterprises as vehicles for social change. Yes? I keep unmuting. Good afternoon. Hi, Congresswoman. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, thank you to FNF for this platform and for the opportunity to, uh, uh, first of all, be invited to this. It's very timely. Um, as you know, we submitted the position paper to the IETF last uh, about two weeks ago. And Congresswoman, um, probably we can share that with you. you know, that was in collaboration with um, fellow community partners, including Bounce Back, actually. And this was really just a, a kind of a coming together and the proposal and recommendation from our end. Um, hopefully, I can send that to you. Um, so I just want to keep it short and say that um, I... I generally agree with the points. Um, I think a big part that I would like to kind of point out is, um, so over the past few weeks, we've been looking at the other uh, formats of stimulus packages from the other countries, right? Um, so this week is especially a big international week for Impact Hub because we're talking to Taiwan and we're talking to Germany on the end of the week. And one of the things that really, I think, was startling to me was how, how they were able to mobilize it because they were digitized, right? Um, I mean, in Canada, the, but the reason why they were able to um, right away provide uh, support was because they had reversal, tax reversals, right? It was easy for them, correct? Um, and I think for us here in the Philippines, I think, um, I think it would be quite... Uh, we can't do that right away. It's going to take a lot of a lot of time to put that in place. And so I want to be mindful as to what we can do today. But I hope that that becomes really a, a thing that becomes a, a priority as we build on it, right? Because it really goes back to that. You were mentioning earlier about the, the unbanked. I think with the rise of uh, the... The need, I think everybody will be on board with it, right? Um, but I want to also mention that um, I think one of the things that we we want to see more really is the how do we formalize the informal sector, right? Because a big part of the startup community even aren't, you know, they weren't, this was a big clamor that they are not part of the cloud that could be given the 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 support because they don't fit in it, right? And then some of them uh, were not registered in that way. And so 
uh, the question is how do we make this easy for them to even become part of that right uh, because as you know lalo na especially on the, the topic is big because of the online sellers diba? where do they fit where do they where, what what is that like right um, and so part of the the recommendation that we actually submitted was um, adding to your point earlier where um, if if the government feels the need to, because there are ready solutions, Congresswoman, there are ready people, startups, entrepreneurs are ready to be, um, to be, to you know, to support the efforts of the government, and that's a win-win, diba? The startups and the entrepreneurs are able to uh, facilitate the the work; they get paid, diba? It's a, it's a. Hopefully, that becomes a cycle that we we encourage. Um, so, yun lang, and I think also. I think streamlined communication for coming from the top down is going to be so crucial to the entrepreneurs because a lot of the, the things that we've been hearing is that they don't really know. They don't know who to listen to. They don't know what to believe. Um, and so I think um, part of this, and I know you're going, I'm sure this is going, this is part of the, 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 Sigura, the, the way forward, right? How do we communicate to them as clearly as possible so that we don't miss anybody? And I know it's a big task, but mm-hmm. I think um, the the success of this will be bent on how many people actually know about it. And the Congress, we know that's the big pain in government. Ang daming programs on government, which people yes. don't know. So um, that's that, and maybe that's where the private sector could also support you. Um, you know, uh, we can parrot um, the things that you are doing because I really do believe that uh, we tried there. We tried getting the, the business sector, you know, the first wave of it was the business sector was coming through, right? But it's really, it means nothing without policy, really. Mm-hmm. And well, pag walang policy intervention, it's, it's really hard. And so I hope that more than anything, we get to communicate this um, as, as best we can. And uh, we, uh, you have my support and you have all of uh, the community support in making this um, kind of implemented forward. So that's all. I have no questions. I think our audience has a lot. <laughs> so I will listen to the answers. <laughs> Thank you. Salamat, Zess. Can I just um, maybe briefly respond to Zess? Uh, ang ganda ng points na ni-raise ni Zess. So again, talagang uh, ang pinakamahirap talaga, pinakamalaking challenge is abutin ang mga maliliit na negosyo na hindi regular. In other words, nasa informal sector. So, um, the idea, number one, is kailangan they should be eligible for assistance. Mm-hmm. Pwede silang mag- makapag-avail ng any form of assistance as long as they fall under the definition critically impacted sector. Right? In other words, um, you were a non-essential business, you were not able to operate during the lockdown, but then uh, you continued to pay your um, overhead expenses and end- ended up not being able to um, pay for your future obligations. So that, that makes you critically impacted. No matter how small you are, whether or not you're regular or not, you are eligible. So that's number one. Number two, um, since they are now eligible, as sinasabi natin, once they avail, um, mara-regularize na sila. Magiging formal na sila by definition because um, they will now be known. They'll have to sign forms, etc., etc. And we give them incentives to get regularized. So they don't the waves a waiver of fees etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Ang sinasabi naman natin diyan is right now of course ang kagandahan diyan is they now form part of the tax base. So alam natin na since they are still not earning money, they will not pay taxes yet, but in the future pag lumaki sila, naalagaan sila at lumaki sila, then they can begin to pay their dues. But for now that they're small, uh, ang pinaka-importante is they become part of the formal economy so they can avail of assistance. That's the most important thing. Number two, you're right, information is very, very important, which is why we have a whole provision on what is called credit mediation services. That's very, very important. Ang kagandahan ng uh, ginawa namin ang bill na to during the lockdown is we were able to have so many consultations, not only with the stakeholders, but also with the various cons. Ang bill na to, in the end, had 266 co-authors. And there are only about 305 cons. So halos lahat pumirma dito. And many participated. And when we were talking about our, our um, planned forms of assistance, may nagtanong na congressman, teka muna, I'm thinking about... Um, my district, and I'm thinking about a very small town, 
paano makaka-avail ang tindera dito ng ano. So anyway, it ended up na tama nga naman yon. We should be able to put help desks in uh, every municipality. And that's our way to disseminate information. But as you said, very important dito ang private sector. So in our financial interventions, when we talk about the participation of land bank, development bank, small business corporation, which is an attached agency to DTI, we are actually, these GFIs actually operate through their conduits, their credit partners, which are, for example, small banks or credit cooperatives. In other words, there's a private sector then, right? So, yan ang, uh, yan ang nakikita natin na, na business model for, for being able to bring down assistance to everyone. Yeah, I think there's a historical okay. uh, crossroads that we're having here. So uh, there's so many things that we've done not right in the past. And I think here is an opportunity with the Arise Bill to really do things right with, in terms of like uh, uh, fiscal, fiscal policy and then uh, uh, trickling it down to the so-called uh, informal sector. So I think this is a good start. So... Kaya I call it a historical crossroads because even if we're in crisis, it is through this crisis that we can really unlearn a lot of things that uh, we've been doing in the past, especially with government and uh, private sector interface. And the private sector is there also to, to provide the technology, which is already there. Uh, it's just a matter of really, um, like you were saying, doing conduits, di ba? Um, it's true because the money comes from DBP and then they distribute it to the co-ops and then to everybody else and that whole process can be uh, a bridge to bridge the gap to, to really distribute the resources and uh, ultimately help the whole country, even the smaller ones. Tama yun na ito kasi marami din na uh, nagtatanong parang, oh sige, magpapautang kayo. Zero interest yan sa kahit na pinakamaliliit ng mga negosyante. So, paano yun? Paano mo malalaman na legit ba yan, na negosyante, etc.? Does it even exist? And uh, of course, even if you have land bank underwriting the loan at nandito ang kanyang opisina sa Metro Manila, diba, how do we really know? So, we really need to work through these um, uh, credit conduits. Yeah, and it's a realization that we really have to bank the unbank. This is the time. Uh, we've been, I think this year is supposed to be the deadline for the digital currency, the digital economy. But since the COVID came in, I, I mean, it, it makes it more real for us in the private sector, even those in the, yung mga magsasaka, mga manggagawa, uh, mga I mean, you know, they also have to be banked. People need to be part of the economy the end of the day. Otherwise, um, we, we, there's always going to be a gap. <laughs> alam mo nga, alam mo na ito, ngayon ko nga rin na-realize kasi after talking to all of these uh, digital solutions providers, dun ko lang na-realize na kahit pala sa mga, yung mga maliliit na sari-sari store, sa mga maliliit na town, yun pala yung mga cash agents. So, it's really a, a feasible way to bring down assistance to, to the ground. Hey, thank you. Thank you, sir, Sir Nato and Gong Stella. Um, lalo na kapag simula na tayo ng konting discussion na pwede natin ituloy sa pag-address ng questions na meron yung audience natin. So, um, before I jump into the questions in the Q&A, um, napansin ko lang kasi marami tayong teachers dito sa ating audience. So, for those who are not... Um, very familiar no, with the legislative process, but are very excited, very excited to you know, receive the government support through the Arise Bill. Kong Stella, could you walk us through briefly with the legislative process? Ngayong nasabi natin na, na approved na ito sa final reading. Tapos kung ano po yung possible timeline and how soon will they be entitled with what Arise has to offer. Okay. So, na-approved na siya on third reading sa House, um, which means transmit na namin sa Senado. So, nasa Senado na ngayon. So, Senate, the Senate has to deliberate on the bill. If they decide to 
pass uh, arise or a version of arise and yung version nila ay iba sa version ng house the two houses will have to come together in a bicameral conference and it's in that conference na yung differences ay ma-iron out right because you only need to you have to send only one version to the president for final approval right so pag uh, ito ay na unify na ng house at na senate it goes to the president and the president then thinks about whether or not uh, i-approve niya or i-veto ba niya. So that's the process. Um, medyo, it's a little bit complicated lang for this particular bill because number one, it is very urgent. Very, very urgent, right? Talagang napakarami nang nawalan ng trabaho. Um, but number two, naubusan ng panahon ang Kongreso because remember, I mean, more of uh, nasa Senado, di ba? So, naubusan ng time ang Senado to approve the bill. So, ang tanong ngayon is, meron bang some kind of a common ground? Meaning, is there like a, a middle ground na pwede? Uh, so, ang naisip namin is, and uh, of course, this is subject to the executive kung ito ay gugustuhin nila, is baka yung 708 billion na pinapropose for Arise, baka pwedeng ihate into tranches. Kasi kung hihintayin natin na mag-deliberate ang Senado, baka abutin tayo ng Agosto. Kasi remember, magbubukas ulit ang Congress fourth Monday pa of July. That's the State of the Nation address of, of the President. So, eh, ang problema, urgent na urgent na ang pangangailangan. So ang baka pwede mangyari, hatiin, magkaroon muna ng bayanihan to In other words, extend mo na yung Bayanihan 1 and dun sa Bayanihan 2, pwede natin ikarga ang let's say 140 billion pesos na laging sinasabi ng economic managers na willing sila to spend on economic stimulus. And then the remainder, which is about 500, magkano ba yung natira? 568. Baka yun ang pwedeng ihate into two further tranches. 280 after say uh, September of 2020, and then another 280 ng first part of 2021. So yun yung nakikita namin na baka pwedeng common ground between the Senate, Congress, and the Executive. Kasi kung nakakabasa kayo ng uh, news reports, and this is a question of Jay-Z Punong Bayan, kaya ko napansin kasi estudyante ko siya. Napakagaling ng batang yan. Uh, ang question niya is, anong comment ko daw dun sa uh, sinasabi ng ating economic managers na unfundable ang arise. Ang, uh, ang sagot ko dyan is fundable siya, di ba? So, um, fun, it's, it's fundable, pero baka para maging acceptable sa inyo, uh, pwede natin hati-hatiin into tranches. And itong proposed three tranches is one way sana para magkaroon ng agreement uh, between Congress, the Senate, and the Executive. Next question, this is from Elroy Lindor. Based on your experience, Constella, how do Filipino firms count the future? Can we expect some firms not to utilize provided for them as expected given the activity? What channels do you foresee to realize the expected desire? Ako, sorry, um, you're coming in a bit choppy. Nasaan ba yung question na yan? Ay, sorry. Can, can you just... Sorry, yeah. Can you repeat It's it? It's from Elroy Rendor. So, okay. based on your experience, ah, Constella, okay. uh -oh. how do Filipino firms discount the future? Can we uh -oh. expect some firms to not utilize the stimulus provided for them as given the, as expected given the answer? What channels do we first realize the expected desire? Ah... Uh, Well, generally, I think that um, we tend to be myopic. Uh, so we tend to be like, especially now that there are urgent matters like liquidity. Diba? Yun ang pinaka-importante sa lahat, liquidity. Kung, kung umabot ka na sa punto na bilang isang negosyante, na ubus na ang iyong puhunan, eh talagang uh, gagawin mong lahat para punuan yan. Because otherwise, then that means you'll have to close up. Right? So, um, and we've been hearing this... Uh, 
the, uh, the comment on uh, liquidity issues from, again, nabanggit ko kanina, di ba? We've had 41 Zoom meetings with various stakeholders. So, kasama po dyan ang iba't iba pong business sectors. And when we talk to business people, um, hindi lang po malalaki. All sizes po yan. In fact, um, I had one Zoom meeting with the transport group of Bohol. No? So, um, nararamdaman natin dahil na rin sa feedback nila na ang tindi ng pangangailangan talaga. Uh, sa puhunan. And uh, in fact, many of them, when we say, um, look, why don't you take out loans? Because there are many uh, banks now would have a lot of loanable funds available. As sabi nila, eh kung uutang kami ngayon, next month, magbabayad na ulit kami. Wala silang kumpiyansa to take out loans. And so, ang uh, sabi namin, that, that, that's why it's very important for government to do direct spending because that's the only way na, na tumapang ang ating mga maliliit na negosyo. Kasi kung maliit ka ni negosyo at ang pagtingin mo sa uh, two, three months down the road would be bleak, bakit ka nga naman uutang? Diba? Parang kang kumuha ng bato at pinupok mo sa ulo mo. Okay, so next question is from Sir Fernando Mendoza. Um, I think he's from the office of the Ombudsman. So he says, I am interested to find out if there are integrity mechanisms provided for in the bill to ensure transparency and accountability necessary in the appropriation of these stimulus funds. So I think Mr. Mendoza, as well as many Filipinos, are coming from the sentiment that you know, we've been hearing from the news na meron tayong ganitong kalaking budget to address COVID, etc. Pero we are not really being fed on the information as to where the funds go. In fact, puro loans na lang din po yung naririnig natin the past. And unfortunately, we already developed a certain negative connotation when we hear of loans. So, ano po yung measures na, ma, na meron itong Arise Bill para mas maging transparent and accountable, lalo na yung mga public? So, kasama sa atin, panukalang batas, ang uh, uh, pag-establish ng isang registry of assisted businesses. So, ibig sabihin, lahat po ng uh, mga uh, businesses na nakatanggap po ng any form of uh, assistance whether it's a wage subsidy or interest lo uh, interest free loans or technical uh, assistance through grants ay sila po ay dapat masama dito sa listahan at makikita diyan kung magkano ang natanggap bakit importante yan because remember meron tayong uh, labor retention conditionalities so dapat if a business receives assistance and has a labor retention conditionality dapat alam yan ng mga empleyado niya Diba? Because protection nila yun eh. Kung bigla silang tinanggal sa kanilang uh, trabaho, dapat alam nila na, teka muna, bawal yung ginawa ng, emple ng employer namin because sila ay uh, merong uh, condition na pinir pinirmahan because they received wage subsidies. So, yun ang importance ng having a registry of assisted businesses. Number two, it, kaya important din na i-digitize natin lahat ng transactions, i-digitize natin lahat ng disbursements because that's the only way na ma malalagyan mo ng datos ang yung registry of assisted business. Kasi kung nakamanual pa rin tayo, kahit may listahan tayo ng mga nakatanggap ng ayuda, yung detalye ng ayuda ay hindi natin malalagay dyan kung hindi digitize ang information natin. So, yan ang uh, sa tingin kong uh, isang paraan to increase uh, accountability as long as that is known to the public, of course, we have to redact the information kasi meron tayong mga data privacy laws, etc., etc. But um, a certain amount of redacted information is, I think, one step towards improving uh, accountability. And of course, dahil nandiyan naman ang ombudsman, dapat takot lahat ng mga government employees sa, sa ombudsman. And marami naman laws na nandiyan. But in addition to that, um, tingin ko itong accountability through a registry um, is also a big step towards that. So, um, next question is from Nerisa De Castro, one of our audience members. Maaari po bang malaman kung anong tulong ang matatanggap ng mga mag-aaral sa pampublikong paaralan? Okay. Uh, right now, ang uh, nasa Arise 
is uh, tulong para sa private schools muna ang uunahin natin. Kasi ang uh, mga public schools, eh kayo naman ay may um, support from the national government. So ang problema natin ngayon is really the private schools. Kasi marami po, number one, ang teachers, di ba? So since walang, uh, walang tuition fees na natanggap ang ating mga private schools, baka wala na silang pangsahod sa kanilang mga teachers, baka ma-displace, mawala ng trabaho ang ating teachers. Number two, uh, marami sa mga anak na mga uh, workers sa critically impacted sectors, baka wala na silang trabaho, or uh, bumaba ang kanilang uh, take-home pay, so paano sila magbabayad ngayon ng tuition? Kaya meron tayong education subsidies para sa um, private schools dito sa Arise. I think it amounts about 15 billion pesos. Parang 8,000 pesos pag uh, college student, uh, 5,000 pesos para sa K-12. to um, So for now, again, because of limited funds, uh, we have no choice but to... Um, to focus muna on uh, private schools. Pero hindi naman completely mawawalan ng tulong ang nandun sa public schools because kasama rin sa Arise, ang mga policy reforms, halimbawa, um, how do we ensure na meron tayong uh, connectivity? Kasi remember, no, so ang public schools, ang balak ng DepEd ay um, mag-blended uh, learning methods tayo na kasama dyan ang uh, baka kailangan natin gumamit ng uh, online. Uh, of course, hindi pa maliwanag yan kasi importante talaga sa lahat is kailangan lahat merong access kasi oras na hindi lahat may access ay hindi natin pwedeng gamitin yan. But there are policy um, provisions in ARISE that pertains to education as a whole and other infrastructure like uh, internet connectivity that would support education. So, yeah, from education, punta naman po, na, naman po tayo sa agriculture sector. So, an anonymous attendee said, it seems that there is little emphasis of agriculture sa ARISE um, Act na daw po. So, how could ARISE Philippines help this sector considering their status as the most neglected sector of the society, so to speak? So tama yun, no? talagang uh, ang agriculture sector natin ay pinaka-neglected sa lahat. Uh, anong evidence niya? Napakaliit ng kanilang contribution to GDP. Um, hindi po natin kinalimutan ang uh, agricultural agriculture sector sa Arise. In fact, again, babanggitin ko, kahit hindi siya considered non-essential business, ibig sabihin tuloy-tuloy lang, hindi sila, nag hindi sila nagsara nung lockdown. Um, uh, ang mga food-related businesses ay uh, nakapag-negosyo uh, nung, uh, nung lockdown. Kasama po dyan ang farming. Um, despite that, ay nagpropropose pa rin tayo ng 66 billion pesos bilang suporta sa ating agricultural sector. Again, ano yung purpose niyan? Um, it's to ensure that, and kaso na humaba ang ating pandemic um, at hindi tayo makapag-import, ng pagkain mula sa ibang bansa, at least sure tayo na ang ating domestic farmers ay makakapag-produce. So iba-iba pong mga napakarami po niyan. Um, in fact, ang mismong Department of Agriculture ang, uh, ang siyang naglagay ng kanilang program para masigurado po na meron tayong food security. Kasama po dyan yung plant, plant, plant na promote po ngayon na programa ng DA. And banggitin ko na rin, Bea, no? Um, Again, bunga na rin ng extensive consultation dito uh, sa pagsulat nitong uh, panukalang batas na to. Meron tayong five departments na talagang in-endorse tayo. No? Kasama dyan ng DA, Department of Agriculture. Kasama dyan ng DTI. Kasama ang DOT, um, ang uh, DOTR, pati ang DOLE. So yung five um, departments sa po na yan ay uh, in-endorse po ang ARISE. Thank you. So, um, just wanted to say na meron na lang po tayong five minutes to answer all of, to answer some of the questions. Um, I hope kung Stella merong opportunity na ma-forward namin sa'yo sure. yung remaining questions of and course. then we just post in Facebook siguro yung mga answers. So, okay. Thank you, Kong. O kung uh, gusto mo mag-extend ka ng five minutes, okay naman sa akin kung okay sa inyong lahat. <laughs> So 10 minutes, 10 minutes left for Q&A. Thank you very much, Kong. 
So, um, isang lumitaw din po na provision sa Aray, yung sa mass testing po. So, one of the questions that we have here is, um, may we know, regarding mass testing, may we know how it will be implemented and who will be the direct beneficiaries? Okay, una sa lahat, Bea, yung Bayanihan 1 already provides for funding para sa testing. So, kung ano, I think there parang something like 65 billion na yata yung inabot ng uh, ng funding ngayon para sa testing. So lahat 'yon ay nasa ilalim ng Bayanihan 1. Pero nung kami po ay uh, yun na nga bunga na ng consultations, na-realize namin na may isa pa ang purpose ang testing which is to build confidence nga uh, among our workers and among our consumers. And because nga ang ating purpose is to revive the economy, ang uh, sabi namin is we should expand mass testing. Uh, dapat ang kasama dyan, hindi lang yung tinatawag na symptomatic, kundi yung asymptomatic din, yung walang symptomas. Um, kasi ngayon, ang DOH uh, policy, I think recently lang yata nila pinalitan eh, but for the longest time, DOH stood by their policy of limiting testing only to those that have symptoms. At ang sabi namin, problematic yan. Kasi kung limited ang testing that way, is mahihirapan tayo to build confidence. Walang lalabas sa bahay. Walang pupunta sa mga malls. Walang mamimili. Diba? In the same way na walang gusto pumunta sa, sa mga pabrika para magtrabaho. So, ang sabi namin, maglaan tayo dito ng pondo, pero ibaba natin to through the LGUs. No? So, hindi ito sa DOH uh, dadaan, kundi through the LGUs. Pero ang final na mag-benefit from that would be the small businesses. Kasi yung mga big businesses natin, I'm sure nababalitaan ninyo yung tinatawag na Project Arc. Nandiyan yung mga big companies na willing sila to pay for testing, etc. Again, to build confidence sa, sa ating ekonomiya. Pero ang problema dyan is paano yung mga maliliit? Yung mga maliliit na negosyo na gusto rin nilang magpa-test ng kanila mga workers. Saan sila kukuha ng assistance? So yun ang uh, naisip namin nung kami po ay nag-provide ng 20 billion pesos for mass testing. So ulitin ko, it's really intended for workers um, along with other high-risk groups and the purpose is to really bring back the economy, uh, bring back confidence so that our economy gets recovered. Okay, thank you po. So another question, ito medyo mahaba-haba from Mr. Omi Castanyar. Um, kung Stella, arise the other stimulus bills rely heavily on private sector pull up the economy. But the pandemic has shown the fragility of an economy that relies on public, on private firms, or on private firms. Do you think it's time that the government explore, number one, a state-led industrial institution? Number two, institutionalizing social safety nets beyond the four feet, such as a possible unemployment benefit and number three, automatic stabilizers that are triggered by certain socioeconomic indicators, such as poverty and unemployment. And Mr. Castanyar also has a follow-up question to this na baka po pwedeng makover na rin natin. Um, is Arise considered a special appropriation bill? If so, how does the legislature plan to deal with the constitutional hurdle of Article 6, Section Ang ganda ng mga tanong ni Sir, ibig talagang palabas sa siya. Uh, okay, unahin ko na yung safety nets. No? So, na napangiti ako dun sa tanong niya because that's actually what I'm working on at the moment. Um, I'm working on a bill uh, on unemployment insurance kasi ang tingin ko, kulang pa talaga ang social protection for workers. Um, in fact, ngayon nga, na sobrang taas ng ating unemployment rate, eh, napakaliit na nakukuhang assistance ng ating mga unemployed workers and uh, very limited yung amount and at the same time, limited yung coverage. So yung karamihan ng ating mga endo workers halimbawa ay hindi sila typically makakapag-qualify for these unemployment benefits. So yun yung mga concerns na nakikita ko dyan. So number one, talagang very important. We need to protect workers, particularly kapag sila ay displaced. Anong dahilan? Because importante na hindi bumaba ng todo-todo ang consumption levels mo 
just because nawalan ka ng trabaho. ba? Diba? Kasi alam naman natin na yung savings, hindi naman lahat. Ang savings is really a luxury. ba? Diba? Hindi naman lahat ay may ipon. So kung nawalan ka ng trabaho ng biglaan, paano yun? Paano mo pakakainin ng yung pamilya? So you need um, uh, uh, pantawid habang wala ka pang trabaho. And number two, the reason for why you need that is precisely to support you while you're looking for a new job. Diba? So in other countries, like hal- halimbawa sa UK, ang tawag nila dyan is job seekers allowance. Precisely because they know that um, that's a kind of support needed by a displaced worker. So in other words, ano tayo dyan? Agree, tayo ay nag-agree sa puntong yan. Number two, yung state-owned enterprises, um, is it about time that we shift to a state-led industrialization. Uh, baka dito, sir, medyo hindi tayo mag-a-agree ng kaunti. Kasi uh, ang problema, and this has been shown um, by experience in so many countries and over many uh, decades, pag ang uh, gobyerno po ay pumasok sa negosyo, ay typically hindi siya nagiging efficient. So there's something inherent about uh, state state participation in businesses na nagiging inefficient siya in the end. Um, so which is why nag, uh, we are really moving towards privatization. So marami, halimbawa, um, yung airlines, di ba? Noong araw, yung, yung PAL, di ba? Ang, ang joke natin doon, yung PAL is PAL always late, kaya daw PAL. Di ba? So yan ay, at pag late parati ang isang airline, yan ay isang uh, indicator ng inefficiency. Di ba? And usually, um, which is why we really move. We try to move airlines towards um, uh, liberalization. So, tingin ko, uh, in principle, baka dun tayo magkakahiwalay ng kaunte. Uh, ang tingin ko, uh, ang industrial industrialization, baka that's uh, better po na kung ang uh, ang magiging main drivers punyan would be the private sector. But of course, with state support. Yan. And then number three po, yung tanong ninyo, napakaganda po tungkol sa uh, appropriations po and whether unconstitutional po ang arise because again, um, our economic managers have have mentioned this a number of times na tila unconstitutional daw ang arise. Uh, una sa lahat, ang, uh, ang arise does not call for a supplemental appropriation. What it calls for is a standby appropriation which is different from a supplemental appropriation. Yung standby appropriation, ang ibig sabihin po niyan is authorized ang spending uh, kapag meron lang funds available. So kaya siya standby. Gagastos lang kapag merong funds available. And uh, sa ngayon po, meron naman po tayong standby appropriation, which is why hindi na... Uh, kinailangan ng isang special appropriation yung arise. So medyo komplikado ng konti, medyo technical ng konti, pero ang bottom line po, we stand by our position na hindi po siya unconstitutional. Ang arise po is uh, very compliant po with constitutional provisions. So yun po. Thank you, Kongstella. Um, Omi, I hope that answers your question. So, yeah, like what I've said, um, hanggang 4.40 lang po tayo ngayon, pasensya na, but um, Congresswoman Kimo has agreed to answer some of your questions. So, we'll be compiling all of the unanswered questions. Send it to her and make the answers available in Facebook. Siguro doon na lang po sa, ano, sa thread ng web- yeah, webinar. Um, yeah, First of all, I would like to thank um, Congresswoman Kimbo again, as well as Sis and Sir Nato, for this very fruitful thank discussion. You. Thank you, Bea. You're welcome. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Sis. Thank you, Nato. Thank, thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you, Bea. Sis. Uh, so, thank you, Sir Nato. Thank you.